Hi, I'm Josh, and welcome to my channel. I'm here to talk about the books I read in January. Now, I've organized these in order of least to most favorite of the month, and I'm basically just going to tell you what they are and give you a brief review. These first two books were two stars, sadly. The first one is Underland by Robert McFarlane. This one you can hear more about in my January uh, year -a review where I talk about several of these books. But this was a book that this was not what I was expecting. Despite its gorgeous cover, its content was much more lacking. I thought this would be a scientific and historical review of everything to do with the underworld, from the geology to Greek mythology. And it was neither of those things. What it really was was just him picking a few regions that he's visited and then finding something tangentially related to the underground to talk about. There was no real co coherent story here, and it was more just a general exploration travel book that I was not interested in. Gave this two out of five stars for his at least fantastic writing. The next book I read is going to be The God of Small Things by Arundhati Rory. And I really wanted to like this book. I unfortunately did not. I gave this two out of five stars because I just could not get into it. I could not follow the characters. I think part of it is that it's, it's based in India and because of that the names are very different and I had a really hard time following that or catching on to who was who. I stopped the first 30 minutes of this book three or four times because I realized it wasn't sticking and I was hoping it was just the moment. I wasn't getting into it. I then stopped, googled the book, googled the characters trying really hard to, to understand who is who, and I managed to figure out the, the main two characters and their mother, who is a central character for a part of the book, and that kept me going for about a quarter of the book. But then things started jumping around. We found ourselves with new characters that I just couldn't follow. I didn't know who was who, what was happening to them, and things didn't quite make sense. I read a couple of reviews since that sort of outlined what happened, and when I did that, I started having a bit of a revelation, like, oh, now that situation makes sense, and so does this one. But as a whole, it just didn't work for me because if I don't understand the situation, then I can't put together a cohesive story. And it, unfortunately, this just didn't work. Part of me wants to drop everything and just read this by hand rather than listening to it, where I can make notes and study really hard, because I feel like there's a good story in here. It's just too hard for me to find it. The next book I read, I enjoyed more than those last two, which was The Mismeasure of Man by Stephen Jay Gould. This book I gave three out of five stars, not for its content, which I enjoyed. It was more how he presented the content, the structure, which I felt like was a little esoteric and hard to consume. I talk about this more in the January Urathon. This is basically a book where he talks about all the different attempts in science to prove that the, the white man is basically superior to everyone else. It's basically a study of biased science reporting or science research. The next book I read was book four of the Earthsea Cycle. What you're looking at here is a collection of all six books in this series by Cur Ursula K. Le Guin. This one I gave three and a half stars. I enjoyed the story. Le Guin is very creative and obviously she's an icon in the fantasy genre, which is why I chose to, to read this book, um, going one book at a time. Unfortunately, I've had a hard time so far. I've talked about this more in the January year as well, but I did like this story more than the others. The next book I read, I'm torn about Boy Snow Bird by Helen Oyemi. First off, let's adore this gorgeous cover in this beautiful shade of green. Now let's just talk about the fact that the story was interesting, the characters were compelling, it was not at all what I was expecting going in, which is to say, I don't know what I was expecting. I, I, I read this title, I thought it maybe be something tangential to Snow White. But what it is, is these are three characters, a mother, a stepdaughter, and a daughter, and their relationship. And it was a really interesting relationship. The problem was, is her approach to writing and storytelling is very abstract. And while I, I kind of enjoy it, when I leave the story, there was just so many things left hanging that I can't get, call this a good story, in the sense that it's just, I didn't find it to be a, com a complete one. It felt like I was reading the first half of, of a novel. And while it was a delightful experience, it just wasn't enough for me. So that's why I got three and a half stars. The next one is Betty White's If You Ask Me, and of course you won't. This is a memoir that she released in 2011, where she talks about certain experiences in her life. Again, this is January Urathon. 
I gave this three and a half stars because while I enjoy Betty White and I enjoy the opportunity to hear her voice, the essays felt sort of scattered and not very focused. The next book, Three and a half stars, Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. This is a thriller that I read on the recommendation of Books on Lala. I really enjoyed it. The story was well written, the characters well done, and the plot I, I thought was also well done. Everything about this book seems perfect in the sense that I can't think of any flaw with it. I think the reason I'm giving it three and a half stars was more to the fact that as, as good as the story was, for some reason I just didn't connect it to in a way that my enjoyment was just okay. But that sort of brought this rating down. And the next book is Fall on Your Knees by Annie Marie McDonald. I read this on the recommendation of a friend. I enjoyed it. It is a historical novel um, about a generation of women. It's beginning with a 13-year-old girl coming from, I believe, Israel and their experiences as they try to survive in Canada. But I found the characters really interesting. Because it was grounded so much in characters, I was interested in most of the book. I think the biggest flaw is that it was just so long that I began to question where it was all going. We kept going from one character to the next in the family line and it just seemed like a never-ending story without a clear end in sight. To McDonald's credit, I thought the ending was one of the best parts because it really brought everything full circle. I wish she had done work towards it more sooner in the book, but all in all, I, I thought it really helped the book and made it feel more cohesive, which I really enjoyed. The next book I read was Yes, Please by Amy Poehler. This was another memoir, of course, by Amy Poehler. I really enjoyed this. I listened to the audiobook, which I highly recommend. Fantastic production value, read by Amy Poehler, just like Betty White's is read by her, except she also brings in some guests to narrate sections where they provide excerpts in the novel. It is a very funny memoir, and I thought its content was much more in-depth and significant than what we had in, say, Betty White's memoir. What's more, I felt like the structure of this was just more cohesive. It was, it was a clear outline that she was working on, and I thought it all worked really well. I gave this, again, four out of five stars. The next book I read was The Red Tent by Anita Diamond. This is another historical novel set in the biblical period during Genesis. It's a retelling of the story of Dinah, and who is a figure in Genesis, and basically her telling her story, beginning with her mother and her experience of her life. I talked about this in the January Earthon. Let's just say that it is a new look at the story that may not be exactly what the Bible wants us to believe. Next book, Girls on Fire by Robin Rossiman. I gave four to five stars. I really like this one. It's another thriller by recommendation at Books and Lala. I talked about this in the January Earthon. Let's just say that I really enjoyed the story of basically these three, three teen girls and their interactions and the basically the drama that, that got cooked up in this book. Absolutely adored it. Really fun. As you can see, a growing stack of books here. I read 21 books this month. I guess I should have started with that. The next book I read was Wilder Girls by Rory Power. First off, favorite cover of the year, of the decade so far. Absolutely gorgeous. I really enjoyed this book. It is a YA novel about a group of girls who are in this institution, this school, where there's this weird set of rules and regulations that they have to abide by. What it turns out is there's some type of outbreak that's been going on that is causing people to die or go mad. This is essentially a dystopian-esque type novel where we're getting to see all hell break loose. It turns out there's a lot of things that we aren't supposed to know, that they aren't supposed to know, that get slowly revealed. I thought the ending of this book was fantastic. It was gory and gruesome. My only reason I didn't give this more than four out of five stars is that the first half of the book or so, I felt like it was kind of slow. It's because it was working towards the reveal, it was just okay at first. I mean, it was a fine book. I enjoy Rory Power's writing. It did not feel like, like I was reading a YA book in the sense that I didn't feel like I was being spoken to like I was a child. What's more, I really liked the exploration of human relationships in this book. There is, of course, LGBT representation, which I am all for as a bi person. But also just friendship relationships. Basically, when you're in tough situations and the type of th types of things you have to do to survive, sometimes decisions aren't easy and we have to make hard choices. The result is going to be bad either way. There was one quote in here I wanted to talk about 
because I think it really highlighted something that's really important for people to remember when they're having, when it comes to tough things in life. What's essentially what's going on here is person A had to do something so that she and her friend person B could be okay, but it made person B mad, even though person A had no choice. And this is essentially person B talking to her, trying to explain why she's mad. Do you think I want this? She says. She sounds hoarse, and I can barely pick out one word from the next. Every ounce of exhaustion crashing down on both of us at once. We don't get to choose what hurts us. My heartbeat thundering in my ears, the slow coil of dread tightening in my chest. Please, please don't be doing what I think you are. Person B, I start, but she shakes her head. I understand what you did. I think you did the right thing, and I am still angry about it. She shrugs her good shoulder. What else is there to say? Now, I feel like this seems like a probably a weird quote just to throw out there, but I don't know, it, just, it was something that really stood out to me. I think it's just an example of a rep, well, what's representative in Rory Powers' writing, which is to say a good exploration of, of human beings, of, of human relationships, and I was all for it. I really liked it. So I highly recommend it. The next book I read was The Three-Bot Problem by Sigzin Lu. This is a science fiction book that is set in China. A group of scientists are starting to die one by one, and it turns out they all exist in this institution or this group of scientists. So they send this one scientist slash engineer to infiltrate them to figure out what's going on. And when he's in there, he starts to learn a bunch of weird things that are going on. And while he's doing that, he finds out that a part of it is this virtual reality game called The Three-Body Problem. What comes next it's just a series of revelations as we slowly start to realize what it is that's going on, what this video, this virtual reality game has to do with everything, and what it tells us about what's to come. I'm very hesitant to give any more detail about this book, even though if you've read the synopsis, you probably already know what kind of genre of sci-fi this is. This book was like a prequel to the series to come, and so I don't want to sort of spoil the type of genre book that this is. Let's just say that I thought it was a very good plot, very interesting. I really liked his use of physics, and I was worried coming in that it might be a little too esoteric, but I thought he did a really good job of incorporating physics without making it too difficult to read or enjoy, because that can be that can be really hard when you get again to very physics-y type discussions. I also thought that the plot overall, considering the genre that it's in, without revealing that, was, was good, it was unique, and I really enjoyed it. So again, four out of five stars. I look forward to the next book. I'm, finally, I'm really glad I finally got to this. The next book I read was Robin by Dave Itzkoff. And this is a autobiography about Robin Williams' life. And I gave this four and a half out of five stars, I think I already said. And I really liked this book. I thought it did a fantastic job of taking his, telling his story from early childhood to his career and tying it into his personal life at least for the details that were already known, and sort of giving us a picture into his mind. The only thing I, that I wish there was more of, which was to say, I w was that there was more details of his life uh, that were not already known. I talk about this more in January Yearthon. Overall, I, I still thought this was a really good book, obviously. I'm a fan, but still four and a half out of five stars. Next book I read was In an Absent Dream by Shauna McGuire. I absolutely adored this book, as I do all of the Rayward Children series. This is a really good book, um, a really good series. There's something about her writing that I find just so magical. I've always had a very fantastical mind. I don't believe in other worlds, but when I read this, I still feel like I am there with the characters. When I think about describing the plot, my, I find my instinct is to use words like uh, us or we or are, and I think it's really representative of her ability to write in such a way that is just so engaging and engrossing to make you feel like you're really a part of the story. And also part of it is just, I love this idea of being able to go to other worlds, and but also the sadness that is inevitable when you start to explore these types of worlds and the reality of them. Yet again, it does not disappoint. I look forward to hopefully getting a never-ending supply of these. The only reason I didn't get this more, I think, was because I thought the pot, relative to the others, wasn't quite as interesting. Now, don't get me wrong, they were both amazing, and I absolutely adored it, and still a really good book. I loved it. Next book I read was Scythe by Neil Shusterman. This is another book I talk about 
the January Urathon, let's just say that I am in love with this series. I am in love with Neil Schusterman. It is so refreshing to be able to find a YA author like Sean McGuire and, and Rory Power who I can read and still enjoy. Because it, for me, it, it's been really hit and miss when I try and find one. And this is a story that I feel like it treats the topic really well um, in a way that is believable and serious. I find that a common problem with science fiction in YA is that the idea, the premise, can be somewhat convoluted and the execution can feel sort of forced, as if you're creating this world artificially just for the sake of having the, draw, having the, the plot-driven narrative. And this, I don't think, is that. This is a very character-driven book, and while it is very plot-heavy, there's a lot of amazing plot developments, which I'm absolutely here for, it isn't necessarily dependent on that. Granted, I think it's better for the plot development because I could not predict what was, what was coming. Maybe it's just me and I'm a little slow, but every time I thought he was working towards one outcome, which I thought would be predictable-ish, which is still okay, he pivoted and took us a new direction, which I was absolutely in love with. And because of that, I am so desperate to read the next book in this series. Sadly, my commitment to Black History Month and Women's History Month has me pushing out until April, but I will be reading these very soon. Ish. I love it. Five out of five. Last book I have with me is going to be How I Know It Isn't So by Thomas Gilbich. This one is essentially about human fallibility and how we can trick ourselves or be tricked into believing things that aren't true. I feel like this book was fantastic. It was a great introduction to the topic. Um, and I highly recommend it, even if you're familiar with the background, because when you have so many different ways of tricking yourself, I think exploring different types of discussions on the topic is necessary. And I don't think people have a good enough appreciation for the harm that can come from tricking yourself. In order, I think there's a good appreciation for wanting to know the truth, for, for valuing the truth. Now, I realize now that I did not go through the ebooks that I reviewed. So I want to start with the lowest, highest of those. The first one I'm going to talk about is Strange Exit by Parker Peavy House, which I gave two and a half out of five stars, which was provided to me by NetGalley for review. I mentioned before that I feel like YA novels can sometimes seem convoluted and the premise, and I feel like this was the case. The setup to the novel just feels forced, like it's there, so she has this type of, so she has this plot to work around, but the fact is, is I didn't find the characters that interesting. I never understood why the plot had to be the way it was, why the rules were the way they were, and how conveniently the rules were broken when it needed to be done. It was as if there was never really any, any risk in the book, and it just disappointed me. I also didn't love her writing, which is sad because I've already bought, I think it was called Echo Room by her at the recommendation of Books and Lala. I'm still going to give that a shot, maybe not as soon, but it just, it didn't work for me. It is what it is. The next book I want to talk about is going to be The Girl from Nowhere by Aliska Tanzer. The Girl from Nowhere was a arc, e arc provided to me by the publisher in NetGalley. She is a Romanian gypsy author. This is a memoir about her life from being born from a 13-year-old prostitute in Romania and eventually being moved to the UK in human trafficking but as she eventually makes her way into becoming independent and educating herself. And I really enjoyed this book for a number of reasons. First off, I thought she structured it fantastically. Her writing was phenomenal. I could tell within the first 10 pages that I was just absolutely hooked. It was so engaging. It was dark and vulgar in just the way that I think is necessary to really articulate the setting that we're dealing with here. I really appreciated how she transitioned from this life to a desire to do something better for, for herself, to prove her family and the racists and, and xenophobics wrong about her being, being trash or being less than because of who she is, where she's from, or her heritage. It's a story of wanting to become educated, and I, I really just loved it. It's being published in the UK, so therefore I probably never would have read it if I did not get provided with this arc. So I appreciate the opportunity to be able to read this and review it and enjoy it. I do recommend it. It's a good, it's a good uh, memoir. The next book I want to talk about was my own book, which is The Road. I already let someone borrow it, so I can't show you, but here's the 
cover, hopefully. And I really loved it. I was hesitant to read Cormac McCarthy in the past because I've always thought of him as sort of a literary author. And I don't know why it is that I keep approaching literary authors with this mindset. I pretty sure I like literary fiction. I more than often do. I appreciate the writing. The writing and the characterization is exactly what I want in a book. And dear God, that's exactly what he gave us. This is a book set in an apocalyptic time where this father and his boy are trying to survive. There are so many stories these days that are about apocalypses. Yet I found this story refreshing because it wasn't really about the apocalypse. It was about these two people trying to survive. And McCarthy does a fantastic job making you feel for them, connect for them, and be scared for them. What's more, I found it to be believable. When I, if I think about what life would be like if we were unlucky to survive in the aftermath of this type of event, this seems like the type of thing that we have to do. We have to make decisions on what it is we, we should try to do, how far we have to push ourselves, and how much can we put up with before we ultimately break. And overall, such a good novel. I, I can't articulate just how much I loved the writing and just the, t the ability to set the tone and draw you in and make you care. It was so dark, so saddening, and it's exactly what I wanted from a good dystopian novel. The last book I want to talk about is Something Deeply Hidden by Sean Carroll. This was also provided to me as an e-arc by NetGalley. Now I got this in November or December after it was published in September 2019. I didn't realize it was published when I got it, but I'm still very grateful that I got it because I don't think I would have read it otherwise. And there's a very good reason for that. I read in the synopsis before I found it on NetGalley that it was a book basically about quantum mechanics and I thought to myself, there are so many popular science books that I want to read and I do not want to try and deal with quantum mechanics. It's not something that's ever interested me and it scares me, so I just didn't want to deal with it. But now I had this arc and so I decided to read it because I, I said I would provide a review and so I did. And I am so glad I did because, first off, it is much more than a book about quantum mechanics. That is just the first section of it. And even the part that is, is so well explained. He is a fantastic science communicator. I feel as if I have a pretty good understanding of how quantum mechanics works. And then from there, the argument that he uses to, in, to suggest that the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is true. Now, I have a blog post where I sort of blog my experience of reading it chapter by chapter and I sort of talk about what it is he's trying to say and my thoughts on it. And I would like to do a full review as well in the coming weeks. Well, let's just say that I was so moved by this book in the sense that it has really sh reshaped the way in which I see reality. And I think that is, a, that is exactly what I want from a good science book. I want my reality, the way I see reality, to be completely challenged. I also want a clear, structured novel or structured book, which is what we get here. And I also want a book that will not be afraid to touch on the science while still not depending on the science. And I think that's exactly what he did. He was able to walk us through the science and then get to the point and make it all make sense in the end. And it was just so good. I highly recommend this book. If you're worried about quantum mechanics, all I can say is I think he does a pretty good job of explaining it. I feel like the conversation, the implications of it, is where the real fun is had. And of course that is five out of five stars. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the books that I read this month. Thank you and have a good day.